这个是我们的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学
Ma we also have two other instructors for the same workshop, Tsang Barula and uh, Florian Nuvayana-san. Tsang Barula was born in India and lives in uh, Zurich today. He has a master's degree in economics and works as portfolio management in an insurance company. He has been a part of uh, TYAE since 1997. He was also a workshop instructor at the first uh, European Tibetan Youth Parliament. And then we have Florian Nobu Yanatsang, born in Germany. Nobu is a new generation of Tibetan activists. He studied computer science in the University of Stuttgart and speaks uh, German and English. He's also been a long-term member of TYAE and leads the German section since many years. Uh, I call him uh, the non-violent mercenary for Tibet. Uh, he also fac facilitated a workshop at the first uh, Tibetan, uh, European Tibetan Youth Parliament. Uh, the third workshop is on living Tibetan culture in Europe. And we have uh, Namri Tayab and Sidhu Kansar. Namri La was born in 1975, studied economics, Tibetan studies, and Chinese at the University of Bonn in London. After his professional engagement in the European Parliament and Human Rights Organization in Berlin and London, he dedicated himself to the area of uh, renewable energies. Today he lives in Berlin with his wife and two children. And his favorite football team is FC Cologne. <laughs> well, I feel honored and excited to address the second European Tibet, Tibetan Youth Parliament today. So um, thank you for the invitation and uh, to take action together with you guys. Besides my address to you right now, I'll be chairing the workshop on living Tibetan culture in Europe. Uh, when preparing for the workshop, I was told that the past cultural topics were of the least interest to you guys. Well, naturally, I find that completely unacceptable. So therefore, Tibetan culture uh, will be the focus of my little speech today. Uh, well, and let me see if I can convince you that A, the topic is sexy, and B, on this topic, we can take action together to help achieve our political goals. Well, some of you might think that Tibetan culture is limited to cooking momos, Tibetan music, and group dance. Others might, sorry. Others might think that uh, Tibetan culture is something our parents and grandparents want to preserve conservatively in the sentimental memory of the past of a Tibet which is long gone. Uh, others might think that it'd be more interested, others might again be more interested uh, in highly political topics and think that, that culture is a sweet hobby but not so really important for the Tibetan cause. Well, my approach to this topic, however, is political and it's contemporary not conservative and certainly not folkloristic. I cannot, I mean, obviously I cannot preempt uh, the results uh, of our workshop on this topic and therefore I will not enter into definitions of what uh, Tibetan culture is. Instead, I would like to tell you why I find Tibetan culture a very important and political topic and why and how we can, we can take action together now. 
well, let's for a second talk big picture, I mean, big political picture. And it's frustrating. Well, there's so many petitions on the Tibetan questions which have been filed, so many demonstrations on the terrible situation in Tibet have been attended. So much talk about the middle path has been done. Yet, our Tibetan exile has been a reality for over 50 years now. And we continue to struggle for our political goals, which we have not achieved yet. Why is it that the Tibetan issue is somehow exclusively linked with thoughts about independence, genuine autonomy, and so forth. Well, these, of course, are ultimate goals. Ultimate goals which I wholeheartedly want to achieve, too. But ultimate goals will only come at the very end of a process. And you know what these ultimate goals make it so difficult? Uh, it's because we are not the only decisive factor in this equation. We do not have full control of how to achieve these goals. Instead, by petitioning foreign governments to raise the Tibetan issue and human rights, we have become somewhat reliant on others to act on our behalf. I don't know about you, but I don't really like to completely rely on other people to do something what I want or what we want. And the Tibetan issue has become something of a bargaining chip between other governments and Beijing. And more often than not, the Tibetan issue is dropped because other interests prevail. This is what I find highly frustrating. Well, why not for a change focus on achievable and yet ambitious goals of importance for Tibet, important for us and where we can take immediate action together, action for the better, action we have control over, action we are responsible for, and this is where culture comes into play. Well, obviously, culture is a very complex, complex term, transcends and encompasses all areas of life. And what's also obvious, the Tibetan culture is endangered. Inside Tibet, Tibetan culture is marginalized by a dominant Chinese culture. Outside Tibet, we are torn between preserving Tibetan culture in exile and integrating ourselves into the culture of our host societies. And uh, by the way, uh, this integrating part, um, I don't find negative as such. Uh, living cultures, they are dynamic. Um, therefore, I find it exciting and innovative um, you know, when, when cultures mix and new variants develop. Or you can think of uh, fusion food or Tibetan rap, for example. But it becomes critical when Tibetan culture simply fades away and is forever lost. Inside Tibet, because of the Chinese government, in exile because we find it difficult to manage preserving it. It is our culture, and we carry it in our heart of hearts, and we want it to live on. And as I said, culture is a very complex issue, and right now I will just focus on one, one aspect of culture, which excites me personally. It's, it's the part of the foundation of every culture in the world. We're talking about language. And the Tibetan language is in a pretty poor state. Just look at me, you know, holding speech in English. And we're here, yeah. But still, it would be difficult for me to hold this speech to you in Tibetan. And more often than not, I would scramble to look for the right words and not be really be able to say what I really want to say. It's not a nice feeling, obviously, but you know, it's my personal problem.